This is the Ender 3 3D printer. And it's been a fun toy. We actually got it last year and I was going to review it and then going to review it. And then we just kept upgrading it. And I said, hey, after that next upgrade or that next thing we learned, that's when we'll review it. And there's been actually quite a few upgrades. So no, we haven't upgraded in a little while. So now I feel as though it's worthy of a review. And boy, we've had a lot of fun with it, including printing things that are practical, like holders for my GoPro. Yep. Um, impractical, but awesome, a glow in the dark. <laughs> so yes, that is a- uh, You don't know what it is. I do know what it is. It's Zelda. It's the Hyrule Crest. <laughs> Hyrule Crest. I was at a loss for words of what it actually was, uh, but did that, and including some really intricate parts you can print on there, because we have a thing for octopuses, and this particular one uh, has a lot of little articulating arms, and you printed them, and it is... It prints all as one piece and interlocks them as it's going yeah. by overlapping them. By overlapping them. So it actually prints the articulating arms, and of course, <laughs> one of our favorites... Uh, we have printed countless and countless ones. A couple of dozen. These. Oh, yeah. Including uh, special requests that glow in the dark. Yep. But the Ender 3 is actually not too, too difficult to use, but there is a learning curve of it. Um, so, Steve did most of the learning. So, kind of give a quick overview of how you get the 3D prints on here first. Well, so what you do is you can go to various sites like Thingiverse and find um, STL files that you can then import into your slicing program and that basically creates all the code that this is going to use and all the commands for it to make the print. Uh, I use Cura. Um, I forget some of the other ones out there but there are a handful and then you can even look at if you want to design your own pieces like I did for the Xiaomi scooter we have I wanted a better slide plate for so yeah. I actually went on <laughs> um, Tinkercad. AutoCAD has a free to use site for designing, for doing basic designs. And you can also do imports like the, S, uh, the LTS logo I made you. Yeah. Uh, you can do an import of SVG files. And then start creating them. So there's a yeah. lot of options. It's, it's actually kind of a flexible system. And the nice thing about 3D printing is you don't have to be a 3D expert. That that came much, much later. I'm just, still not. Yeah, <laughs> just not. Just going to things like Thingiverse, you can find tons and tons of things that people have created, taken the time to upload, and you can just download them and make them. Uh, we made these, for example. We made all our Monster Hunter uh, icons. <laughs> yeah, so we have that. Um, and then the device itself. This right here, this little holder and guide for the filament, uh, that's an add-on. Actually, yep. this whole backside is an add-on. The whole, I'm going to slowly twist it this way. Uh, we even made these like tracks that hold the wires. So they're not just kind of flopping here. So these are once again, add-ons. As add -ons. it goes back and forth, it moves with it. Yeah, it moves with it because this goes up and down. So it's pretty simple the way that works. And there's the tools that come with it. And these are add-ons. Does this come straight off? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's and cracked. Then, oh, it's cracked. Yeah. Well, let's print another Making one. A, yeah. Yeah, we broke. <laughs> so if you crack something, you break something, you can print another one. Now, what's the resolution on this, Steve? This is one of, in terms of the 3D printing, this is a average? Um, No, it actually has a wide range. Okay. They, I can't remember if it does less than 0.1 because I haven't tried. But I knew, no, it will do uh, 0.1 millimeter. And I think it goes all the way up to, I. Uh, I don't know how high it goes. I usually do between 0.1 and 0.2 millimeters. It does have that control so we can determine just how smooth you want to make something or how detailed or in-depth you want to get it. Yeah. Now, one of the other upgrades we did is this is the original, and it's kind of got the scuff marks on it, the plate, because the plate has to heat up to a perfect temperature. That's a little bit of the tuning that you have to do. And we swapped it out for a glass plate, which is a lot easier, you said, to deal with. And a yeah, lot easier. Yeah, uh, you have to worry less about it, like getting the gouges that this has when, you know, <laughs> your nozzle's a little too low and you're trying to get it to bind. Uh, you do... I did find you do have to heat the glass up a little bit more to a higher temperature to really get a good adhesion, but I haven't had to add anything to it. The glass, it just seems to adhere right to it. Um, well, the new one, Ender 3, and in fact, the new Ender 3 uh, X model comes with a glass bed. Yeah. So the, that was one of the common complaints uh, about it. Yeah, and people didn't like the fiberglass that you had to then heat you had to heat the fiberglass peel the old one off and then put the new cover on and so people complained about that so the newer version comes with a glass plate just right out the gate right 
Now, and the other thing too, when you're doing like this here, this is actually three different colors and this is a single filament system. So once you do each layer, you have to swap the filament for it. So this is just well, to note that. That's actually, so these are actually printed in different parts and then pieced together. Yeah. But yeah, you can actually, um, I didn't see the setting in Kira, but I know some of them support this. There's a way to give the printer a stop code where it will stop the print, retract the head, and then it gives you t and it stays warm and you're supposed to swap the filament out and then you give it the command and you push the button and tell it go. Yeah. So in a, a couple things about this review. Now, I, I, we, if there's enough interest, we'll do some getting started videos and dive deeper yeah. into it. But <clears> one of the things I wanted to comment on was the reliability. We have, this thing has, it's even up running it at his house because it would just run nonstop like yeah, over the I weekend. Didn't, I didn't want to leave it here overnight running without being able to like check on it. So for larger prints like this that may take, I think this one took like uh, 14 hours, but I'm not here 14 hours. So I right. took it home and I could start it you know, in the morning and let it go throughout the day as I did housework. Yeah, because what, what you don't want to do is in case the, something happens with the 3D printer or a nozzle gets stuck, uh, it makes kind of a mess and you don't want 14 hours of mess that you have yeah. to clean up. So you kind of want to keep an eye on it. But the overall reliability after a year and countless <laughs> hours of use is great. Now, another thing that the early models, but this is, goes back because you'll find if you do some Googling, like Ender 3 problem with a couple connectors burning out, etc. The very early editions did seem to have those problems. Yeah. I, I remember people had mentioned me like, hey, does it have the right connector, the right cord? Um, that was around the era we bought ours. Ours, we looked it up, was after that. So we didn't have to make any modifications to the electrical, but that's a long since gone problem. So if you buy one today, which it's like I said, still a current relevant one, um, those are not really the concerns that you have anymore. It's also not that noisy. I mean, it makes a little sound, but it's not annoying. I don't know if you'd want it in your bedroom while you sleep, but nah, it's not like... I've slept through it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not uh, really that loud. It, it does wake <laughs> me up because what it does when it finishes printing, the head lifts up. This comes all the way up, and then at the same time, the bed will come all the way forward. The sound of the screw gear turning to uh, constantly to bring it up makes a bit of a high-pitched squeal, and then the bed going forward. That ha I've actually been woken up by a print finishing. <laughs> yeah, so it wakes you up when it's done, you know, it makes a little yeah. bit of extra noise. <laughs> uh, but we'll leave links, we have some affiliate links where you get this and where we, and which filaments we used with this particular model. And I'll uh, leave a little bit of time-lapse video where, uh, of us making something and uh, take some pictures of things we have made in the past and uh, how they held up. Because it's been, it's been a lot of fun to play with. And I'm going to say, yeah. you know, after 11 <clears throat> months of use, we've had no breakdowns. Nothing's come loose or broken. I've or... had to clean the nozzle out, I think, twice because... Yeah. The, the inland gray, I'm struggling with printing. Oh, the gray doesn't <clears throat> print as well? It, so oddly enough, do, even doing these like bigger flat prints, the gray here seemed to do fine. But when I tried to do this in gray, it doesn't seem to want to adhere very well because the small parts want to dry and curl up off the bed for some reason. Yeah, so then that is some of the fine tuning that you just learn when you're uh, playing with this is uh, dialing in the temperature. But once you get it, it's all those things. Keep your notes, keep remembering, oh yeah, this is the temperature I set it yep. to, uh, things like that. Like glow it, in the dark because of the uh, phosphorus in it, you have to print it at a higher temperature. Yep. Yeah, the glow in the dark had a higher temp and that. So there's still a little bit of learning curves and some fine tuning you have to do, but there's a lot of documentation you can find out here. And like I said, if there's enough interest, we'll do some getting started videos with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but we'll leave links to the software that Steve's been using to get the designs. And of course, you know, Thingiverse, I'll leave a link to that as well. And uh, like I said, we'll have an Amazon link where we got this is all purchased on Amazon along with the uh, filament and everything that you can get there. So, all right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.